Welcome, let's do a little tutorial on the very basics of how to use Megalog Viewer. Uh, there's HD, there's a couple different options, but they're all essentially the same, they just have different feature sets. So let's jump into it and uh, start from the very bottom. So first of all, you just need to go to File, uh, up at the top left, and look for the data logs that you want. Um, if it's a Megascort product like my car, it'll show up as a .mlg file. Uh, this Megalog viewer can use all different types of data logs from MoTeC to Speedduino. Uh, it's basically just CSV based. It just plots uh, data um, in matrices and things like that. So let's just jump into one of these that I know is good. We can just go to like this 50, uh, 23 pounds of boost post turbine pressure. So if we go ahead and open that up, uh, you'll be presented with a log like this. Um, a lot of the times if you don't have a tune loaded over here on the right there won't be anything so what you can do over on the right is if you have the tune file uh, especially for Megasquirt products you can just hit open tune and uh, select what tune you're using to just focus on the data log reading we're not going to worry about that currently so we'll just close that that'll be fine you have four fields here where you can look at data along a timeline so down at the bottom, you'll see time. And what you can do is use your arrow keys on your keyboard and your mouse to click through areas in time. So if you look closely, you can see the time move in uh, like milliseconds. You can get down uh, to three digits of time, depending on how fast your logging rate is. Uh, you can get pretty, pretty uh, close in your time. Uh, the next thing you'll notice is as you click around in here, You'll notice it's pretty big and it's hard to see a lot of detail on a certain point. Um, so like right here, if I just click, this looks like a, a spike in boost based on the uh, the map pressure over here that's in red. But how do you look at, how do you zoom in on that? Well, you use your cursor on your mouse wheel. Or if you're using a keyboard uh, or a touchpad on like a laptop, you'd use like two fingers to scroll up and down at the same time to scroll in. So basically you can scroll in with the click wheel on your mouse or with a couple fingers on your trackpad on your laptop and that will get you into like very fine details. So this is the uh, this is the default layout and you can click around on it. It'll have over on the right you can see RPM, map, um, throttle position, and pulse width is the PWs for your injector pulse width. And then coolant temperature, MAT is intake temperature and then AFR, uh, dwell time on the ignition, um, EGO correction, it just has a bunch of, of basics, then your VE table uh, and your battery voltage, which are all really nice for just basic tuning. But a lot of the times you want to get a specific field in the data. So you can go change these um, just by clicking on the drop down menu on each of the graphs and you can specifically pick them out. Um, there's also different tabs up the top. One's called default, one's called tuning, and you can even make more views. So for example, you can say like, um, you could say like back pressure view. Uh, let's just, for example, you could say like back pressure view, and it would always be a default that would go just to how you wanna see your back pressure data. So let's just do that right now. And what's nice is too, as you remove fields, you'll get you'll get greater visibility on the screen. So you just go in here to these drop down menus on the left and just remove, start removing them. Just go to the blank up at the top, or hit space, and it will take all the data out. And so you can basically get it down to one graph or two graphs. Uh, I usually like to do two graphs when I'm trying to do something pretty granular. Um, but for example, let's leave RPM in there and let's open another graph and go to boost PSI, and then we can overlay that with back pressure. So if we go, I think if it's set up right, it'll say back pressure. Yeah, this is a data field that I created on the Megasquirt, so it's specifically named back pressure. <coughs> You'll notice right here, the back pressure signal is fairly wavy. This is pretty typical when you don't have a pressure chamber that can dampen some of the pulses through the exhaust. I just have about a foot and a half of eighth inch copper 
and uh, you get a wave like this. It's very, very bumpy. What you can do to smooth that out is apply smoothing. So over here on the left, there's the back pressure. There's these three lines uh, right next to the, the field drop down, and you can click that and hit field smoothing, and then it will smooth it. And you can also make the smoothing more aggressive if you go to the smoothing factor and then type in a value that's, I think it's between one and 10. So like two is the default, you can go to four and you can just see how it smooths out. You have to be careful though with smoothing because if you smooth too much, you actually might be losing peaks and valleys in data, especially with like AFR that you actually might have a lean spot or a ridge spot. Um, but for the most part, I would say I, I've found the default smoothing of default value of two to be pretty reliable and it at least just helps you so you don't see those like jagged jump up and down lines. Uh, but you can go like click on in a specific point right here where the back pressure, which in this case is actually exhaust pressure, it's not actually EMAP in the exhaust manifold. Uh, we're testing uh, the post turbine uh, pressure, so the pressure actually in the downpipe on this. And you can see right there it's 4.1 um, PSI at 22.6 PSI of boost. So what's cool is you can like lay these over each other and visualize data trends, which is exactly uh, what me and my friend are trying to do. And uh, we're just gonna show a quick tutorial of how to like quickly find a field that you need. And uh, basically you can uh, just go over here and add more data as you want to see it. And uh, like for example, I do want to see my air fuel ratio, so I can put my air fuel ratio in green over here. And you can see as I go through and use my arrow keys on my keyboard, I can just step through different points. And you can watch the AFR, the boost, the back pressure, the throttle position, the RPM go up and down uh, with all of that in respect to each other, which is really nice. You can kind of visualize what the engine's doing at, at certain points and uh, you can you know see little blips and jumps the other thing that's really cool is you know looking at other vitals uh, with what's going on in the rest of the car like battery voltage we could put battery voltage in here and sometimes i have actually been working on a car where the voltage drops at high power you've got some losses in cables that need to be replaced and sometimes that shows up especially on old cars so there's a lot of good valuable data that you can uh, you can mull through when you're uh, when you're when you've got a good data log. So I would highly suggest getting starting with data logging and purchasing Megalog Viewer. They have a basic version, but it only lets you view just a few seconds of a log, uh, which typically isn't enough. Uh, the paid versions range from like thirty to fifty dollars, and in my opinion, they're well worth it. You can even uh, tune from a uh, tune from a, a log and and re-upload a tune so you can go out drive by yourself without you know reaching over and looking at a laptop the whole time you can just set log go drive around do a log come back in the comfort of your own home uh, just sitting down you can easily look through some data make some corrections on your tune and uh, you'll be good to go but for now those are the basics that's really what you need to to know to get started with like how to view a data log. Um, down here at the bottom are all the fields. So this is a ton of fields and you can filter this out, but for example, if we go to this, this boost area uh, right here where we start to come into boost, you can see down at the bottom, all those fields change as I use the arrow keys to go left and right through the fields. Uh, so you can watch um, various things change and there's a lot of uh, fields that may not even show up in uh, the graph that you can look at real quick at a glance. So if you wanted to pull one of those up, you also can. So for example, like down here, uh, spark cold advance, uh, or, you know, spark table advance, you could just, you know, if you see something that doesn't look right, or you want to, you want to open it, it's as easy as just pulling this up and then going through and grabbing like your spark advance, uh, like that. So, and you can, uh, yeah, you can saturate this and move them around. There's a lot more complicated things you can do, but that's uh, kind of the basics. Another really quick thing that's really nice is if you're on a graph and you right click your mouse, you can go to various points of, or various fields in the, the data log, 
like boost PSI, go over to the right and just click jump to max. So it'll just take you to the max in the entire uh, log. So say you went on a, a drive and you only hit boost like twice out of like a 20 minute log and you know that one of them was one of the main ones, you could go to boost and then just go to max and it will, it'll jump you right to the max and you can just zoom in on it. For example, back pressure, you can go to the max. Like where was my max back pressure? Where did that really run away? Uh, okay, yeah, we can see, you know, there's something right here where it maybe got loaded differently or was at a different speed. And then AFR, you can jump to, to min. Apparently we had a spot where it went really low uh, in the map just here, uh, you know, it looks almost like it was uh, basically the car had shut off or something like that. So you can see, oh, that's that's data that we, we can throw out and we don't need. Um, but this is a really good way to view things along a timeline. Um, there are some other ways to look at things like through histograms and scatter plots that I can get into later, but just to get you started on a log on a timeline and just view some quick data like this and pull through the fields, this should be enough to get you going. So thanks again for watching. Thanks again to Bradley at Savage Fabrication for sponsoring the turbo upgrade on this car and on this channel. And uh, we look forward to doing some more testing on the car soon here. We've got a dyno appointment scheduled. So if you're interested in seeing more of this and more on uh, how dyno tuning and data logging and things like that work, please consider subscribing and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.